Okay, so welcome to Forthright. I'm Sulani Madsen, and my guest for this interview is Miriam Ben Shalom, who is from Wisconsin. And I've got a little bit of biography, but I'm glad you could join me today, Miriam, and then I'm going to give you a biography. Uh, it says here in the history of gay and lesbian life in Milwaukee, Wisconsin, that you are you were the first gay or lesbian service member to be reinstated to your position in the United States military after being discharged for sexual orientation. Uh, you're a longtime activist. It says in the LGBT community, we'll get to that. What's wrong with that statement later? Uh, you're wrong about the T. I am not an activist on behalf of T. And that would be why we're having a conversation. Um, it also cites the the awards that you've received. Oh, I'm sorry, Marie, what'd you say? Sorry to have interrupted, but no tea. No tea. I will I will drop that off and you'll have to take it up with the website later. Um, I will. You, <laughs> you, have, uh, you have a long history of being active in, in LGB rights. Uh, 2005 re recipient of the Stonewall Award presented at Pride Fest in uh, June 11th, 2005. Um, and, um, you, you've served in the Israeli defense forces. You've served in the U S army. Um, you went through that whole case when you were discharged, um, went through the courts, you reenlisted, uh, later the Supreme court refused to hear the case, but clearly you have been fighting this, uh, this, these issues for a really long time. And, um, so when you are when you were disinvited to serve as the uh, grand marshal of a parade, uh, that was a probably a signal that something was wrong. Something was wrong, and that, uh, like you said, like you interrupted when I said that uh, this this website says you continue to be a voice for LGBT equality and social justice. You got a problem with the T part there. You bet I do. And that's where we have a we have a mutual connection, and that's why I wanted to talk to you. We've gotten acquainted over social media for a while. I know that you've got some family issues going on, and uh, as do I. And so we've, you know, we've got a, a little bit of a human connection there. But we also have a connection over a problem with the whole T thing. Um, and you are a veteran of marches and protests. Tell us a little bit about how you come to this position that that you want the LGB without the T. One's sexuality is part and parcel of a human being. It can't be changed, okay? Just as you can't change a heterosexual, you know, and make them be gay or lesbian. So the same thing, you really can't make a lesbian or a gay man heterosexual. I re Transgenderism is a mental aberration. It's an anomaly. It has nothing to do with sexual orientation. It is not part and parcel of a human being. There is no biological basis for this uh, social contagion. And it does not belong with the LGB, as far as I'm concerned. Um, I resent mightily the idea that we are now pregnant people. I was listening to NPR today, um, that part of my body is now referred to as a front hole. And the, it seems that the transgender juggernaut is seeking very much to erase women as, as human beings, a whole and complete in some respects. Um, probably whole and complete, you know, in terms of who we are and what we are. I really, I really don't, what? Yeah, Karen, my partner is injecting injecting XX, XY. She's right. I mean, <clears throat> I frankly don't care how a person dresses or whatever, but it is not my purview nor my responsibility to value to validate that kind of mental aberration. As a Jew, I look at what's going on here and look at the butchery that's going on in human bodies. And it reminds me of Joseph Mendelek. Um, we do not lop off healthy body parts to deal with somebody who's a schizophrenic, do we? We do not lop off healthy body parts to a person who uh, maybe is has some other sort of mental illness. 
to cure them. Uh, if somebody has an eating problem, we don't say, oh, here, we'll lay down on this table and we'll take some more fat off your body until that you look like something from Auschwitz, do we? No, we don't. We, it, 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 where do does big pharma and big medicine get off saying that in order to help somebody who has gender dysphoria, you lop off healthy body parts? It, it's ridiculous and it's an abomination and it angers me. I, I, I get so caught up with my anger that sometimes it's hard for me to express myself. It, it's just, we don't lop off of healthy body parts for other terms of mental anomalies. You shouldn't be doing it with this. These, these young people need therapy, maybe talk therapy. They need actually to be left alone and they'll probably grow out of it. I can say that uh, a doctor I know had a child who thought he was transgender. Um, the doctor wisely just let the kid go, you know, whatever, do, dress as you want, be as you want. And the child is now going to college and is no longer transgender but and is quite regular. It may have that he's gay, the child is gay, you know? So it just goes to show. I, I will not change my language. I will not be forced to lie. You're not going to compel me to, to call a man a woman. And I, you know, if it becomes a crime, then so I will go to jail because I will not prostitute my thought processes to massage their mental aberrations. I think one of the one of the things that uh, when we had had an initial conversation, one of the things you had said about all your struggles for civil rights for those who are lesbian or gay was that we got complacent. We thought everything was over and done with and it never is. And I have to say, I can really resonate with that because I feel like we got complacent as as feminists. You and I are right in the same generational age group that we had got past the idea that there were boys toys and girls toys and and we'd kind of figured out that that doesn't matter. Each individual has their own interests and personalities. And, and the fact that I like to play with trucks and Legos more than dolls doesn't mean that I'm a boy. And, you know, we, we got past all that. We had opened up all of the, all the occupations, uh, all of the, uh, all of the opportunities for both sexes to choose what worked for them, for their particular personality. And now we've, we've lost all that. We've got this force that wants to impress you must be a girl because you wear you wear make you want to wear makeup i don't wear makeup i i keep wondering yeah, what's I, wrong with me look i mean look at this haircut yeah <laughs> this is my pre-surgical uh clip to make it, well, it will make it easier for wash because i didn't think about that when i had my shoulder surgery and i had longer hair so no. Yeah, it's 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 just so angry, you know, to 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 and, and what bothers me is the the lifelong damage and the lifelong mm -hmm. dependence on medication, you know, and that so many of, of so many of these young people that are going through this will never know what it means to be totally intimate and experience satisfaction with a partner. Um mm -hmm even going to be able to feel sex for the most part. They're going to have health problems, uh, bone density problems, you name it. And it, it's just, I can't believe that, that that they're going around saying, oh, Luperon is reversible. No, it's not. You know, and it, it's like, I keep hoping. I see crumbling around the edges starting to happen. Um I hope it continues because we have a, a lot of a generation of young people due to this cod swallow. I I just wrote a column today that's looking at the AP style book, and I, I sent you a page of it, the, the page that talks about how to talk about gender. Um, one of the issues is mainstream media in, in setting a narrative is generally bound within the guide rails that the AP style book provides, which is great for things like capitalization and punctuation and how do you, you know, how do you put titles and address? That's fine. That's great stuff. We all need to have those kinds of rules. 
But when it makes statements that uh, experts say you should use sex assigned at birth and not, uh, and you shouldn't say biological sex, but the reason you shouldn't say biological sex is not because sex is assigned at birth, but because sex is inherently biological. It can't even stay coherent within its own with its, with its own style book recommendations. And then it <laughs> goes on to make statements that, that are completely false that uh, by saying that puberty blockers are reversible when more and more information is coming out that they are not. And so we have a, we have a journalistic profession stuck in one, uh, one point of view. Well, the problem with it is, is it, uh, you know, since when I, I don't recollect Moses went up to the top of Mount Sinai to get the word of God. I, I wasn't aware that AP was there as well. <laughs> now, I am shocked, I tell you, shocked to learn that that might be the case. It, it has gone far beyond its original mandate to just provide some order. And, and you know what I would do? I'd tell my students, disregard this part unless you choose to use it. It is not mandatory. I mean, mm -hmm. pregnant persons I know. on PR. What is going on here? You know, yes. I, it's just the transgenderism is a men's rights movement, whole and complete. It respects no female, um, and it wants nothing to do for it, with any female except perhaps to have us carry their child as a surrogate, maybe until they mm -hmm. figure out how to how to engender children like in axolotl tanks or whatever. Well, yeah, like uh, Brave New World and Aldous Huxley. Yeah, or or in Dune, you know, that they grow things in these mm -hmm. axolotl tanks, which actually are the bodies of women, but that's neither. Yeah. Here. You know, it's I, just... I have a young friend who, um, uh, I don't I don't want to be too specific, but a young woman that I know who has... She she's always been a little different. She's probably a little bit on uh, a little bit socially shy, socially awkward. Uh, went off to college, kind of fell in with a group that convinced her uh, that that there's something that what's wrong with her would be fixed by changing her sex. And she's made some steps that way. Her family is still uh, reaching out to her. Um, you know, she's in my prayers daily to uh for her to open her eyes and see that she was she's fine she's fine she's just her she's herself and and trying to change sex is not is not a solution it's just another problem to add well she doesn't change her sex no she's changing her outward presentation and right. if she was shy and awkward changing her outward presentation is not going to lopping off breasts or whatever isn't isn't gonna cure that right you know right it's gonna get male male entitlement you know i mean some guy in drag gets women of the year and 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 what do do swadeson trans men get oh i'm a pregnant man yeah hello we're back to the stereotypes again yeah you know and i mean what does it mean to be non-binary? Well, dye your hair badly another color and insist that everybody bow to your demands and everything else. But besides dyeing your hair badly, that's all you have to do. You make demands upon everybody else. This is so silly. You know, it, it, Go ahead. they're not being original. They're no more original than hippies were, you know, because they are all kind of alike. They all dress more or less the same way and then go back to the 50s um the greasers all dressed the same way and wore leather jackets mm -hmm. and 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 the the collegiates wore khakis and letter sweaters you know they all thought they were being original but you know they were all the same the same the same in the group well these people are the same the same and the same and what angers me is they are also preying upon the true people who are are most at risk in the society, you know, autistic kids, mm -hmm. kids, you know, maybe are for whatever are social for whatever other reason 
maybe socially socially awkward. And it's it's you know, I, I don't know. I mean, I'm almost glad I'm not teaching now because I, I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't do it. I wouldn't say it. I, you know, if I had yeah. a, a trans kid in, in my class, I would refer to that kid by his, her last name. Yeah. You know? And, and that, that'd that be it. I'm not going to call Johnny Tiffany. N not going to happen. Yeah. And, and speaking of names and words, it's, it's, uh, it's just, it's a little bit infuriating as well that a movement that wants to insist on, you've got to use these words, then also wants to insist on using words for me that I object to. Oh yeah. Uh, I, I am not cis. I am. <laughs> I, I'm a woman. That's just it. It doesn't require any modifiers. <laughs> oh, yeah. It. I told people, I said, how dare you call me, sis? That's literal violence against me. How dare you use a, a word on me that I do not accept, nor do I approve of to be used? And they get, well, you are. I, no, I'm not. You may not use that word. You're committing violence against me. Literal violence. So, Miriam, I can see how you got disinvited from the Pride Parade. How... how don't give a flying fuck. Well, I can understand why. I can understand why. I Damned cowards anyway. They didn't tell me to my face. I find out secondhand, which very well tells you what they may, what they may have wondered what might have happened. You know, if my legacy depends on lying and misusing language and affirming somebody's uh, uh, fetish or you know, whatever it is, um, then I don't have a legacy that's worth being a legacy. Um, if I have to do these things to be a grand marshal of a parade, take the grand marshal and, and shove it. I don't need it. I never did any, any, any of what I did for power or for glory or a pat on the back or anything else. I did it um, because it was the right thing to do. I don't care about power. I don't care about notoriety. I don't care about pats on the back. And I frankly don't give a damn whether anybody approves of me or likes me or not. I do what I do because in my heart of hearts, it tells me I'm right. I understand honor. I understand integrity. I understand truthfulness. I understand responsibility and accountability. And that is how I live my life. And if some people don't like it, too darn bad. And that's the my story, and I'm sticking yeah. to it. Yeah, I, I know that the damage that's being done to this generation, um, I, I keep thinking of the thalidomide crisis. Exactly. That, that there was, here we've got this great cure for something that wasn't even that, I mean, I recognize that, that it can be really hard, but it's not even that bad, but we've got this great cure. We're just going to deploy it everywhere. We're not going to wait for till we have actual, actual uh, data or actual test results. The U.S. waited. That time the U.S. waited and it was Britain that suffered the worst of it. This time the U.K. has pulled back, uh, as have the Sweden, Norway, and Finland. There's four European countries that in yeah. Europe, they're starting to realize the data does not support any of this stuff. It's totally driven by profit. And when you look at those are countries that have a more socialized medicine, they don't have the private market where getting to make a profit off of drugs and surgery is an option. And, and we do. And that niche has been, um, has been exploited uh, to the detriment of a whole generation of children that are, that are growing up with these confusing messages telling them that, that, uh, Sex isn't by sex is biological, but sex isn't biological, and that you can be whatever you feel. And I have no idea what anybody, how a four year old is going to intrinsically feel like he or she is supposed to be in the opposite body type. Your body is your body, the brain, the spirit, the body all come as a package. And uh, this idea that they could be mismatched like they came out of the Amazon warehouse, pick, but the wrong picker is is ridiculous. Yeah, well, if, if they, you know, I, I know four-year-olds who who said, well, you know, I'm a dinosaur or I'm a unicorn. Yeah. Um, shall we have them surgically altered to resemble dinosaurs or unicorns? Well, of course not. That's ridiculous. Right. You know, and I think a lot of it has to do with parents 
are also afraid of having gay kids as well. And and my response to that is until this this whole more rotten, corrupt morass of transgenderism started building, nobody really had any problems with LGB people. We weren't demanding right. education in schools. We weren't right. demanding to be, you know, to 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 go and read to kids, you know, in libraries. We were just asking to be able to live our lives. Then we got gay marriage. And that meant that we could live with our partners without fear. We could leave an estate to our partner without mm -hmm. fear. It, it, it meant that our relationships were worthy and worthwhile. Okay. And then all of a sudden this transgender balagon arises and we are losing all of the rights that people like you and people like me work so hard for because mm -hmm. of the I mean, the don't say gay bill. No, it has nothing to do with LGB people, right. really. It has everything to do with guys guys walking around in dresses and demanding that they be called women, you know, that they that they be allowed their fetishes and their perversions to be accepted. Yeah, and in in so many states, Washington as well, probably Wisconsin, one of the issues has been men who say they are women so that they can be they can be incarcerated with women who have no choice in the matter. They got to put up with this, with this guy in their cell and uh, feel threatened constantly because if they complain, they're the troublemaker and they end up in solitary confinement. Yes. And, and that's also a violation of international law, by the way. Um, international law provides that men and women who are incarcerated shall be housed separately. Even... God forbid I should mention the Nazis, okay? But even the Nazis understood that you housed women and men separately. So they had men's camps and women's camps. It, I mean, I hate to use that analogy, but it is, yes. if you look at what international law provides for prisoners, whether prisoners of war or other kinds of prisoners, that men and women shall be housed separately. But we've come to a world where if a, if a man says, I am a woman, we have to respect, yeah, okay, this is a woman, and all all physical evidence to the contrary, we're going to put him in the women's prison. And so there's a, that's, I mean, that's happening. It's happening, and it's wrong, and it's, and that what, makes me angry. Many of these guys, once they get out of prison, right, they, they ah, I've had an epiphany. I'm going back to being a man. Yeah, right. Oh, well, it's fluid, you know. There isn't anything. There's no fixed reality. There is no actual reality. It's whatever you feel like today. I'm a redwood tree, personally, so I think I should have my own national park of several thousand acres of land, you know? I think so. I don't know. Today I'm wearing my Goat's Rock t-shirt, so maybe I'll just go out to the pasture and curl up for the afternoon for a nap. I'm wearing my uh, Michigan Frambling Reunion t-shirt. I, I went for tests this, this morning. Um, I'm a big blood drop pre-surgery stuff. Yeah, yeah. Well, uh, Miriam, I I appreciate you taking the time to talk with me. Uh, I wanted to have this conversation because so many voices are just not being heard. Because, I mean, it's just it really is hard as a columnist. It's hard for me to navigate through through the thicket of of limitations on words to really express plainly what's going on. And I knew that you would speak plainly. Oh, well, there's no other way to do it. They're, they're, one of their slogans is be kind. Well, being kind has got us nowhere and it's time to make a stand. You know, it really is. <laughs> Back in the early days when we were started protesting for our the LGB, for our civil rights, we were out in the streets. I mean, I've been arrested twice in front of the White House for protesting discrimination. I think that citizens of goodwill and people in the LGB community of goodwill who find this, this hogwash going on need to get off their duffs, get out of the armchairs and the recliners, and get out in the streets and nonviolently but loudly and vocally protest. And if 
the transgender juggernaut happens to show up, give it right back at them. They want to yell and shout. Then you have your own bullhorns and, 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 and scream at them. Somebody lays a hand on you, take them to court for assault. Be nice didn't work. Being nice can work sometimes, but it doesn't work with most of these people. I mean, I, I can't believe that, that Biden would allow these people into the White House and then have some guy drop his dress and say, oh, look, I can expose my breasts and I'm at the White House. What kind of, what yeah. kind of inane anencephalic adult pay does that sort of thing? Yeah, I somehow we, 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 we've 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 lost sight of the fact that civilization rests on having customs and traditions that 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 uh, support a healthy society, and that there are rules and limits. And we've somehow drifted into everything is all right, everything is all right, everything is fine. You can't criticize anything or anybody because you might hurt their feelings, and that's. We've lost sight of the of the existence of norms and traditions that that we need for a healthy society. I wonder whether we'll get it back. I suspect perhaps in 20, 20 years it'll it'll have calmed down perhaps somewhat. Um, I can only hope. But at seventy five, I'll be ninety five, and I don't know if I'll be alive then. But if I'm not, and this silliness is still going going on, I'm going to come back and haunt them. I'm going to work on, uh, I'm working on my granddaughter and her friends. I'm going to be the ghost howling on the edge of darkness, howling at them. I will. I believe you. This is a threat. I, uh, I'm still trying to do it. I'm still trying to be nice. It's kind of my, I have trouble expressing anger, but I let it out in my pen when I can. And, uh, and I'm trying to work on this, this, this uh, podcast format as a place where I can bring on voices that haven't been heard and, and get the conversation going. So I'm hoping that this helps some people wake up to what's going on. I hope so. I mean, was there anything I might've added anything you might've wanted from me that I didn't address? I, I think that, uh, I think I might take my notes from when we had a conversation before and, and uh, turn that into a nice little uh, essay to go with our conversation on the video. That'll catch both the folks who, who prefer their, their content video and the ones who like to skim the, skim the written word. So you were, you're happy with everything then? I, I think so. I think um, I going. what? I'm sorry. I got going on my soapbox. No, I invited you onto my soapbox. Um, you know, we we talked about that uh, that Jefferson quote that the roots of the tree of liberty must be watered with the blood of patriots, and 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 how we both feel about seeing the butchering of healthy bodies. Um, I, something's going to give. We're going to start seeing the detransitioners speak up louder and louder, and um, and I and I think the voices of these. De these people, these detransitioners are the ones, they are the ones blowing the bugles that will bring the walls of Jericho down. Mm -hmm. Say, I don't like it. I don't like being, I mean, talk about marginalized. Gee, yeah. you, think, you know, being told I don't have the right to exist. They, people will listen to those who went through the fire and came right. out the other side, you know, and I don't know what word to use because damaged sounds so horrible. For those who were changed and came through the other side and are mm -hmm. living with their change, you know, those are the voices that, that even more than me, you know, an, an old activist, people will pay more attention to them than to me because I don't know what it is to be transgender. I don't want to know what it is to be transgender. What angers me is if that's true, they don't know what it is to be a woman. I do. I am one. And it, it's just, I mean, it, it was, there are more and more of these voices 
And what I say to every young woman who thought she was going to be a guy and who detransitions and comes back, this is what I say to them, and I wish you would include this. Welcome home, young sister. Mm -hmm. it didn't take you any longer. We've been waiting for you. Yeah. Come home. We are here for you. Yeah. To me, gender affirming care means affirming someone in their own sex, in their own body, in their own feelings, not modifying the body just to fit some illusion. It doesn't work. It doesn't work. And it doesn't work and it doesn't work for the, and it's, 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 it's just an unhealthy choice. Uh, it's not natural. It's not science-based and uh, it's not faith-based. It's not, it's got no basis except. Mental aberration. Yeah. Social contagion. Yeah. So we got to teach the next generation. Well, I'm working on that part. Well, I fought for 37 years and I'm 75 now. If, if I thought going back into the classroom would help the matter, I probably would. Well, find a good youth group to participate with where you can speak plainly to them, build relationships and speak plainly. If they'll let you in. If they'll let me in, yeah. Yeah. Well, thank you, Miriam. I appreciate you taking the time today. And I, I wish you the best of possible outcomes with your with your shoulder repair. I I know mine made a huge difference for me. So I, I hope you have the same the same results. Pretty sure I will. I'm I'm yeah. feeling positive and strong. Okay, give my best to Karen. I will, I do. And you be well, take care, and stay safe. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye. -bye. Bye.